Well, traders, uh, as I mentioned, that's it for me today. I'm up uh, just over $12,000 with my open trades, which you do not see here. And um, I had one losing trade in ZM, which I still think is going to come down. But, you know, who knows? Maybe not. And um, some other very nice trades. Uh, best winner today is INO. But, um, and I'm going to quickly talk about two trades today, just two. Although I had plenty winners today, I'm going to talk about just two, INO and BNTX, because I think both of them has something that I need to mention. So first thing you need to take a look at is um, INO here. I don't need to show you the intraday of INO right now. I just need to show you the fact that INO looks like it can't happen. <laughs> And what does it mean it can't happen? I mean, yeah, there are some fairy tales, some nice stories, some Cinderella tales that do happen every once in a while, but not in the stock market, not usually in the stock market. I mean, every once in a while, yes. Usually, no. Take a look at INO. This stock was $5 recently, $3, sorry. And then it spiked up to 30 something dollars. I don't care why. There's just... It cannot be justified and I don't care what's the story behind it and I'm not going to get into the numbers and I don't care what's the story of INO and the reason why everybody thinks they should buy it. And you know, here in the room, that was probably the first time you see me trade INO. There were several times where a lot of people here in the room mentioned INO for a long. But you know, the thing is, you take a $3 stock and you go long expecting it to continue higher you could be right on the money. You could make a lot of money every once in a while. I'm not saying you can't. But the right way to do it, the more safe way to do it, is to wait for the time where it's just going to crash down and come down to zero. Because that's probably what's going to happen to a stock that started at $3 and went, moved up to $33. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen. And I'm not saying I'm going to ride it down to zero. I'm not. I'm just mentioning you need to take a look at the chart and you do not go log stocks that are $3 and I don't care how much money you made on this. You know what? I'm sure there's a lot of people here who made money, but I'm sure that there's many more people here who lost money on INO. I'm sure that most of you guys lost money going long INO during this few months period. I'm sure you paid more than you gained. And the only way to trade a stock like that is to go short, wait for the right timing and go short. Once I saw INO starting with a gap down today, like 10%, I believe it was, and looking at the daily chart like that, there's just one conclusion. This stock is going to come down. And that's why I took it. And I also mentioned that in the room that I'm going to take INO with larger size than usual. And I did take it with larger size than usual. Initial move is up. So what? It's going to fail. Shorted it right over here. It came down. Scott added under, wanted to add under 23. I was about to follow him under 23, but it spiked down too fast. And then continued. And then we added once more. Can't remember when. And I've got a 9,000, actually $9,924 and still riding. I know actually over 10 grand in I know with two trades with extended quantity and I took it where I should have taken it as a trader at the point where it starts losing it when it starts coming down you should not be looking to long a stock like INO unless you've got some advantage I don't know you should usually be looking for a short and wait just wait patiently wait for the right minute for the right time for the right day and then short it I mean if you want to keep your money safe that's the way to do it if you want to play around if you want to have some fun there's a, there were a lot of fun moments in INO but we're here as traders not to have just fun but also to protect our capital and try and make money uh, getting in at the right time second trade I want to talk about is BNTX I was asked in the trading room today whether I should go whether we should go long, I think the uh, point was $70. Look at the way BNTX started today. Look at the day at the way it came down with such a huge downside momentum. There's a lot of people who love to bottom fish. 
there's a lot of people who love to go long at places they shouldn't. And I mentioned that in Trading Room that the right thing is to look for BNTX to fail and ride the trend. I mean, I, I, it's not something special. It, it, it's just not something special. So I posted BNTX. We had a nice short. I made like, what, 4,200 and still riding? Yeah, still riding. Actually, my last uh, 400 shares are not doing that great right now. But there's one thing I want to mention here. One thing I want to mention here, which is extremely important. And it's not just a trend. And it's not just the, just the fact that we had a nice entry point in BNTX. Is what happened right over this point over here because something very special happened there. I do not know if you noticed. You rarely see me do something like that, but I want to talk a little bit more about this. BNTX, when I shorted it right over here, spiked down like crazy. That was beautiful, but that was not enough. I was looking for more. It did not reach my target. And then all of a sudden, it spiked up. From, so from a very nice winner, all of a sudden, I have a very big loser. Oh, not a big loser, but a loser. So it spiked down and then spiked back up. You know, we usually say when uh, that even a dead, can, a dead cat can, can bounce. So if you throw a cat, a dead cat from a tall building and it reaches the ground, it can bounce. That's exactly what happened to BNTX right over here. That was a dead cat bounce, an intraday dead cat bounce. When something like this happens, what do you think is going to happen next? I mean, you watch BNTX crashing down. You watch the intraday trend. You watch it coming down here. You're in the money and then it spikes up. And I don't want to ask the next question because I'm sure there will be a lot of people here who would just say now it took them out. This could be the point where you were taken out of a good trade because you just don't know what you are supposed to do. Now you held me. I was saying, oh, look at the spike up. That was an opportunity. That was an opportunity to add to my short. Not because I was averaging down my loss. It's because something weird happened, which is not supposed to happen, but did happen. It spiked up with, instead of coming down. Now, what do I mean by it spiked up instead of coming down? How do I know it's going to continue coming down? Just BNTX intraday. Now, what do you think is going to happen there? Is it like... Uh, do you expect it? To, do you expect it spiked out because some intraday fantastic news just came in? Yeah, it could happen. That could be one in a thousand chance. Okay, an intraday good news in BNTX, so it spiked out. So there was a big buyer. Absolutely, there was a big buyer somewhere. Somebody just bought a fat finger. I don't know what happened there. But when something like this happened, it's not likely to continue. You just wait for the spike to come down. If you have a good chance and you believe that, uh, look at the chart. I mean, look at the way it trended lower. I added, I doubled my size there at a small loss, actually, not a very big loss. I think I was down like 20 cents when I, when I, when I, uh, when I doubled my size. And that's why I had a bigger winner than I expected. To start with, I started with half size and then I moved to full size when I doubled down my size. But again, look at the spike up. That just, just doesn't happen. And if it does happen, don't think it's going to go the wrong way. If you think it's going to go the wrong way, it's just because you had too much size riding on the stock to start with. Just imagine, if you had 400 shares, it spiked up and it took you out. Would that happen if you had 200 shares? Well, maybe. What happens if you just had 100 shares? Would it spike up and take you out also if, it, if you only had 100 shares? Well, no. And then maybe you would add another 100 shares in with me. So instead of having a loser, you could have a winner. So that all has to do with your imagination and the size that you were riding. That's it. If you got my point. Stocks just don't do that. And if they do that, it's unsustainable. It's going to come down. It's trending lower. The trend is your best friend. Look at the way it came down. That's it. I don't have anything else to add here. I mean, that's just two points in two trades that we took today. We've got several other winners. I mean, we enjoyed uh, Boeing and we enjoyed... <laughs> what else do I have here? Uh, FedEx was very nice. And, well, one loser in ZM. But um, if I count my winners, I've got uh, four winners, actually five, including two trades in INO, one loser. 
perfect way to go with the perf perfect day trading day and it adds up to my other day to the, uh, this week so I'm really having a great week and I hope you guys doing too and I saw that there were many many guys many traders here in the trading room who took INO with me and that was really beautiful love the fact that many of you guys took it and again look at the daily of INO that just was a must short day for INO uh, well glad you did that thank you very much for joining and I'll see you all tomorrow enjoy the rest of your day and if uh, you're on YouTube and uh, if you don't mind giving us a thumb up that will be very helpful for our channel thank you very much traders see you all tomorrow thank you for watching our video before you go we invite you to take traders free welcome course it was designed to teach you the basics of Wall Street trading click here to sign up for this no risk no cost offer if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.